It's time now to review headlines on today's newspapers. Uh, incidentally, we do not have the ombudsman of this day and Arise Media Group and this day Newspaper Limited Group Executive Director, Kyle Komala Lafe Aung KK. But of course, we'll do justice to it. Mm -hmm. Together we share it all. <laughs> we can and hold we'll it start, down. Absolutely. And we we'll start with this day on Sunday, the newspaper of record, where the lead story says NJC moves to appoint eight justices of Supreme Court. And the rider MBA gives lawyers Wednesday deadline to indicate interest. Uh, that's an important one at this time, mm -hmm. uh, given the fact that it's coming uh, on the heels of the bill uh, that uh, the president, Ashwajibola Metinubu, signed, raising the retirement age of uh, uh, judges to 70 years. On top of that, Tinubu asks press to hold government accountable. Hale's new uh, Nigerian Guild of Editors officers. Uh, it's a beautiful, well-crafted, uh, congratulatory message from the, from the presidency yesterday uh, to uh, congratulate Eze Anaba, the editor of the Vanguard newspaper, who was on a Friday in Oweriimo State, uh, elected the new president of the Nigerian Guild uh, of Editors, together with 15 other people who will be on the ESCO and the Standing Committee. And I like the fact uh, that uh, the presidency is saying, uh, and not only congratulating him, but to say that there will be partners and progress uh, with the Nigerian Guild of Editors and the entire media machinery in Nigeria. Uh, and of course, detailing in the areas of interest that they think uh, that the media will need to improve upon. I think that's the kind of relationship mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the presidency uh, should have uh, with the organs and associations uh, within the Nigerian media, the uh, MPA, Newspaper Proprietors Organization, uh, the NUG, Nigerian Union of Journalists, of course, and the Nigerian Guild of Editors. So congratulations to Mr. Eze Anaba, uh, who had a resounding, uh, very resounding victory at the elections on Friday. On top of that, CBN OKs e Naira as payment option for diaspora Remittances. You know, we spoke about the 18 to 20 billion dollars <laughs> yes. that come in from uh, abroad, from Nigerians who are doing legit legitimate work. Yes. You know, who are there, whether they are youth, whether they're women, whether they're old. Uh, if you are uh, outside of the country legally and you are remitting money, you are helping, Definitely. you know, to build the country. And I don't think that any uh, rep member from somewhere in Benue, you know, should be uh demonizing the concept of jaguar mm. you know it didn't start today it has always been there andrew don't check out has been there for more than 30 years uh nigeria didn't collapse because of that and it won't collapse because of jaguar and the most important thing is to fix the reasons why why people are living en mass so that's a good one from cbn okaying the e naira as payment option for diaspora remittances on top of the masthead apc mobilizes governors to unite Akpabio. Yari Loyalis. That's on page 10 of today's paper. That's a fallout of the uh, National Assembly elections. And I think that everybody, will, of course, will have to come back and be on the same page so that they can begin to make good laws, mm. policies for Nigeria. On the window, federal government to dissolve boards of federal agencies and parastatas. That's a major, major one because once the dissolution of the boards, you know, happen, uh, it means that uh, the, the, the president or the presidency will have the leeway to appoint uh, a new set of people, either as chairman or members of the board. And, and this is where uh, they try to uh, look after, you know, uh, people who supported them during elections, people who are capable anyway, you know, mm -hmm. who, who can do the job. But then it took a long while before President Buhari filled most of those board positions. But here is the federal government saying that we will dissolve them. And I think that that's within the purview of the secretary to the, uh, uh, to the federal government. So it means that a number of people, how many people can be ministers? How many people can be special advisors? 20 special advisors, uh, at most between 36 and 48 for ministers. But you've got hundreds, if not thousands people. of people who are assisted in working. So uh, that's an area where they will have uh, uh, to work. Uh, and I think we should just quickly mention the cover picture. That's a royal visit. Mm. Uh, two of Ashwaju's, you know, key boys, <laughs> uh, yuppie, you know, royalties, you call them, uh, the Elegushi of Ikate Kingdom, Said Demon Elegushi, you know, uh, and my very good friend, friend, uh, Oba Abduwasiu, Aumogola uh, Lawa, you know, who was a three-time commissioner in Lagos State before he was made the Oniru 
of Iruland doing very well in that kingdom. Went to Abuja to visit their principal, yep. who is now the president, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That's a good one, the two yes. of them. All right, then let's move on to this day's style. Of course, on the cover, we have Itwa Igodalo, or Pastor Itwa Igodalo, and the byline there reads, Finding Strength in Family. Of course, I do have to say, <laughs> Happy Father's Day at this thank point. You, to you, thank you, thank you, all the fathers, <laughs> um, you know, watching this right now. Yeah. And the cover note there reads, as we celebrate Father's Day this week, we celebrate all fathers, especially those raising kids alone. Mm -hmm. Speaking to Pastor Itwai Godalo on this, he shares the joy of raising his two beautiful children, who he says are his main priority after God and his journey thus far in his new role as a single father. Let's not forget that uh, back in uh, 2020, he did lose his wife, Ibudunio Godalo, who was a beauty queen and event management expert and philanthropist. And it was a, it was a passing that really affected the whole nation. And just mm -hmm. to see him now, yeah. uh, if, if, you, if you go all the way to um, the the actual story you see him with his son and his daughter yeah, yeah. and you know it's, it's not easy uh, yeah. being a being a father and being a single father at this age and just on still on the on the theme of father's day there are movies uh, in there five movies inspired by fatherhood uh, how to the guide on becoming the best dressed man in the room and of course uh, you don't need that steve because you're always the best best dressed man in the room and then even an interview with uh, bovi uboma who is a comedian Bovi Uboma on yeah. fatherhood. That's on page 20. Onto right. the secrets of balancing laughter, love, and uh, Fantastic. Life. Good one. Pastor Itwa, by the way, is always a delight to read yes. or encounter. Definitely. You know, so having him on cover today, it's a good one uh, for Noyen and, and this day's time. Uh, just 10 seconds before we go, uh, we move quickly to Sonder Punch, uh, where we have two important stories. The, the cover story, Impending Flood, Neymar to write governors, state, religious bodies, plan... IDP comes uh, and the riders say we're oh, going to use uh, RCCG, MFM, Deeper Life camps as temporary shelters for flood victims. Lagos, Kano, Abia, Delta, Borno, Quara, clear drainages, open up water channels. And there's a feature, mm. uh, a news feature uh, on page 42 and 43 of the same paper, floods wreck havoc as residents ignore warnings to leave affected area. I think this is an important thing at this time, you know, uh, the issue of flooding, uh, because this is the season. Yes. People will have to deal with it. And last but not the least, many Nigerians still stranded in Sudan, wow. suffering. That's according to the footballer, Halwadi Yala. And I think that um, uh, uh, we shouldn't be quiet just because of the initial evacuation that we have done. Many Nigerians are still st stranded there. Mm -hmm. And uh, either the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or the Diaspora Commission should look, to look into, into it, it to make sure Nigerians do not suffer needlessly.